Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classics Last Non Classics. This is episode number 720 and episode 624. Two DC trades. One is DC related. The other, of course, is definitely DC trade. First up, it is Aquaman Volume 4, Thorn of Atlantis. I'm going to say this once. This trade has absolutely no reason to exist. Now, I do praise the fact this, this particular trade does collect the entire crossover. Yes. But here's the thing. Why in the world couldn't this crossover be put into one trade? Yeah, seriously. There is no reason for this at all. I mean, you can simply just have the crossover. Just call the trade Aquaman slash Justice League. Throw of Atlantis. Have the crossover. And just throw it, just basically have the Aquaman issue, which is issues 0 and 1460 in the course, through just like issues. You can just have one trade. No need for two. This is kind of unnecessary to do. And you can just have, like, the third volume be just, well, 13 and 14. And the grid storyline. Yes. That would be better. Instead of basically collecting the same thing. Though Volantis is an awesome storyline... But, here's the thing. It doesn't need to be in two trades. It's completely unnecessary. I mean, in the case of the Batman trades, you don't have this problem. At least that when they came to other crossovers, they do manage to put the entire thing in one trade, not put two separate trades. Though, when it came to crossovers for New 52, from, this is, of course, the initiative of 2011-2016, they had a really big problem with this. Like, oh my gosh, this problem was so... Laughably stupid of uh, basically putting parts of a crossover in the trade uh, and not just have it specifically for one trade and just have next trade just skip over it. Oh, God forbid we do that. Yes, this is by far one of the biggest problems that I've had with New 52 trades. And I'm sure, heck, I'm sure like almost everybody else who read these trades. Yeah. If you want Tharvalantis, you can just get this one trade. You don't like, well. If you look at something like, let's say, Superman Doom, for example, uh, there's exactly two trades that collect just the, just their parts of the series that basically part of that storyline. That's Superman Wonder Woman Flame 2, War, I think it's called, uh, it's basically called Doom and Issues. Same thing with the one for Action Comics. Here's the thing, you don't need those two trades at all. You, you can just bypass those trades. Oh, they might look missing in my collection. No, they won't. Just get doomed. In the case of this, I would just get this. But in the case of Justice League, you kind of have to get the, the, the Thorn of Atlantis tree for that one. Because here's the thing with that one. That collects not only Thorn of Atlantis storyline, but also the two part featuring the return of, featuring New 52 versions of the Cheetah. Yeah. What's issue zero? Aquaman's origin story. Which one I could tell it's... Not really much a big change. Uh, mostly how he was conceived was pretty much the same. Yeah, his uh, Silver Age origin story, you know, mother being a queen of Atlantis and, of course, father being a fisherman. Yeah, that's from the Silver Age. As far as, you know, that part of origin story never changed. The only change it did make was the fact that people were sort of not, let's just say, he was sort of a public, he was sort of basically, uh, people sort of followed him around because he could talk to fish. Which has been a recurring joke for years. Yeah, but nothing around really Thrones is new. Uh, the only thing you can know or say about this particular issue is that it's the first post flash appearance of Ocean Master. Yep. Yeah, this guy on the cover. That's freaking Ocean Master. It's a great storyline, but like I said, this trade is completely unnecessary. Like, in the case of the Aquaman, like, you could just have one trade, Aquaman says Justice League, Thor and Volantis, simple as that, and have the Aquaman, have the third volume be the the fourth volume of the series. Have that be the third volume, and just bypass this. This is completely unnecessary. I have no, I still to this day do not know the reasoning why DC did this for. I'm still going to give the trade 9.5 out of 10 because it's really good, but like I said, this was unnecessary. Why couldn't this be one trade? Yeah, it's kind of... This is not the only crossover to do this. Um, I know that in the case of crossovers like... Uh, Doomed 
Hell, uh, the Superman crossovers, Hell on Earth, Doomed, Savage Dawn, and Final Days of Superman did this too. I'm not kidding, they did. They Oh yeah, they also did for Krypton Returns as well. Instead of having just one trade, let's have five or six trades collect the entire part of the storyline, which make absolutely no sense at all. Just skip over them. I'm glad the Rebirth traits fixed this problem, because... I think for I think DC must have finally listened to people. Um, I think they, they must have finally listened to their critics. Like, hey, uh, why in the war are you collecting parts of this crossover here, even though you have in their crossover tree right here? Yeah, this is completely unnecessary. And thank God they actually got rid of this stupid problem. Because this is by far one of the dumbest ideas DC had when it came to their trades. Let's just throw everything in trade. Without just realizing, oh yeah, this is part of a crossover. I do praise the fact they actually about to put the Justice League issues in there. But but here's the thing. This should not have been Volume 3, even though technically it is. It should have just been called Aquaman slash Justice League Thor and Volantis. Bam! Perfect. Perfect trade name. And just have the fourth volume become the third volume. Simple as that. It's the only trade I can think of. You can just basically you can get this so you can get this one, but you can easily just rearrange the trades up a bit and have the first volume be simply just like if they do like a deluxe edition of this thing, which I think they should because this is a really awesome series. Have the first volume just collect just the trench and the other storyline collect them all in one. Have volume two just be the rest of J Jeff Johns' run, which is Death of a King. And, of course, throwing the first story arc for Jeff Parker's run. Simple as that. I mean, you can easily lower it down from about eight trades to about, like, in the case of, like, if you do these deluxe editions, you could probably lower it down about four or five trades. Yeah. All right, next, let's go to something else. All right, now we're going to Vertigo with more of Fables. Yep, this is the second deluxe edition for Fables. And this book collects issues 11 to 18. And it also collects two one-shots. Yep, it does. Excuse me, what one-shots does it collect? This book collects... Last Castle and A Wolf in the Fold. Yeah, uh, I should point out, though, um, The Last Castle was... Was I think it was printed in Volume 3. I'm looking up right now. I know the for a fact that in the case of Wolf in the Fold, that was actually originally printed in the original trade. Yes. That's basically what they did. The Last Castle, that was actually originally printed in the trade editions for this thing. Uh, for Volume 3. Actually, no, it was Volume 4. They put that there. So it's kind of like, okay, they took Volume 3 and took his two one-shots, bam, put them together. Yeah, that's what they did. Uh, but what's the storyline? Now, I should point out that the writer of this issue is, well, Bill Willing writes the entire series. But the artwork is done by Mark Buckingham. Yep. The guy is one fantastic artist. Though with this one, they actually sort of, well, this is the issues where they increase the nudity. Yeah. This is the first trade that has nudity. Here are the artists here besides Mark Buckingham. You have... Lynn Medina, Craig Hamilton, P. Craig Russell, Brian Tur Talbot, Linda Melody, and Steve Alina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As for the issues themselves, well, we have Bag of Bones, which is simply uh, the character Jack during the events of, of the Civil War. I'm not talking about Marvel Comics Civil War. I'm talking about the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. Yep, and apparently he fought for the South. Which was weird. I have no idea why, despite the fact he lives in New York City, and yet he fights for the South. Yeah, it's also in, yeah. This is also storyline for so, so, Excuse me. It's the first instance you have nudity in the series, and plus gore. Yep. And here's the thing. This whole purpose of this was that uh, Jack had caught, believe it or not. The Grim Reaper and gave him a day off because he trapped him in a sack. Yep. Of course, he also used a sack to catch up swine. Mm -hmm. Then you have a two-parter, which is called a sharp operation, which is basically just, well, 
I think it's just a storyline to get rid of Bluebird. I think it. No, actually, no. It simply just investigates investigate the. Um, there's a reporter who is trying to expose the Fables community, so they try to get rid of them the most simplest way possible. They simply humiliate him first. They knock everybody in his building, and eventually he gets killed by Bluebird. Yep, Bluebird eventually just killed the guy, and nothing really much has happens to. Uh, the Fables community, yeah, nothing really happens to them at all. Oh yeah, and it's later revealed in the following storyline that Snow White is indeed pregnant. Yep, it's revealed in the storyline Storybook Love that Snow White is pregnant with Bilby's child. But I will reveal exactly what kind of child it is. Yep. Yeah, and for some reason... Because she's pregnant, she has to walk around on crutches. Now, here's kind of the thing. In real life, there really is no reason for, you know, to walk on crutches if you're pregnant. But it, it because she was injured also, that could explain why the crutches, yes. Mm -hmm. Mostly put, it just, well, the whole point of this storyline is to get rid of Bluebird. Well, yeah. Actually, Bluebird tries to get rid of Bilby and uh, Snow White, and they end up having a one-night stand, and she gets pregnant. Yep, she gets pregnant. Also, they make Goldilocks a assassin. Yep, and also in the storyline, Bluebird dies. Yep, he gets killed by Prince Charming. Yep. Now, here's kind of the thing. Uh, when they first show Goldilocks, she shows some random woman Bluebird just sleeps with. Oh, yeah, and they go, oh, yeah, this woman is Goldilocks. The same woman from the story from the Three Little Bears, where she eats their porridge, sits in their chairs, and sleeps in their bed. That Goldilocks. So, they make Goldilocks a, a woman with glasses and an assassin for Bluebird, which is really weird. Oh, yeah, and they have her die. Which is quite odd. Oh yeah, and apparently because Bluebird was killed in and in, in basically in a sparring match, uh, Bilby, not Bilby, I think it's uh, Prince Charming is never charged with murder, and because apparently uh, Bluebird never had a will, all his assets are basically seized by Fable Town. Yep, they are. And boy, they do explore this a little bit later. It's also passed with the. Uh, a few other characters uh, in the homelands. Yeah, it reveals about uh, Little Boy Blue's past with Little Riding Hood. Though they actually do explain this a little bit later. Uh, Robin Hood shows up in here. It's a really good set of stories in here. Mm -hmm. And Last Castle is simply the f pretty much when the Fables are forced to leave the homelands. That's simply what the whole point of it is. Uh, Wolf in the Fold, that is just... Uh, Bill being World War II. Though they do have another story of him in World War II later. But I found that story to be pretty interesting. I mean, Bill be fighting in World War II, that's actually pretty cool. I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10. I highly do recommend, um, I, 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 I have to keep recommending check out the series because this is a fantastic series. Now, if you want to get the series like this better than getting the original trades, uh, I recommend getting these. Though they cost 30 bucks a piece, though I got these in the library. So I got this for free. So, there's only 15 in these books. And if you get all 15 books, you get the entire 150 issue comic book. Uh, in the case of its spinoffs, uh, some of them are usually like one trade. Uh, ever after, I think, that, I think that's in like two, maybe three trades. In the case of Ferris, I think that's in five trades. Yes, I think that series is in five trades. But aside from now, there is one thing these trades do not collect at all. I looked this up. Uh, apparently, they don't collect the miniseries for Cinderella. Yeah, uh, Cinderella had two miniseries. Yep, they had two miniseries. Mhm. Mm now I will get to a later novel, which basically has uh, a later graphic now, which has the Bacter pilot. To the Jack of Fables ongoing series. I'll talk about that in the future, okay? Uh, not much else to say. Great book. Alright? But next episode, I'm coming books three and four. 
Yep. You'll get thoughts. Oops. You'll get thoughts on those in the next episode, okay? But until I see you there, bye.